Hello everyone, welcome back to part four of our Wordle project. So, so far, uh, we've come a good way and uh, this is what we have designed so far. And there are a uh, few more couple changes that we need to apply to this uh, thing that we have. For now, one thing is that user can type more than one character in each input. So that's something that we need to stop. So let's just start by that. <coughs> Uh, controlling things like that, do you remember in year 2009 something came out called jQuery? And jQuery was perfect for working with DOM. We have to give it, to give it, uh, give that to jQuery for sure. And also, you know, working with DOM, like for example, we want to say if user types something inside that, then go ahead and uh, select the other input and focus on that. So this is something that we need to do. And we need to do that with ref in Vue.js. And I'm going to show you. For, for start, we first need to uh, add an event for this. As you can see in JavaScript, there are so many events like click and things. And the event for this one, for example, this event is called click when you click somewhere. When you focus on an input, this event is called focus. When user types something on uh, it, it's called input when user immediately types something in an input it's called input the event is called so in Vue.js you start with an at sign and the name of your events for example you can say at click equals to for example some method or some function and that's it but if you wanted to provide some argument for that also you can actually provide some arguments for that as well if you want to uh, but the name of the event, for example, whether if it's click or event, for this case, our case is input. We want user to uh, call a method when uh, user inputs something. But where do we write that some method? Huh? Well, there are, you can actually write, type that there, but also there's another section here inside your export default section, which is called... We can continue with methods. We can define some methods here. And inside this methods, we can define any method that we want. If it's one or two, for example, method X, we can say method X and then method Y. And go ahead and continue and define as much as uh, method that we want. So, and also there's something that I need to mention. We can also write this like, for example, I can remember that, uh, for example, like, Five months ago or six months ago, I liked to use, uh, to write my um, method sections like this. For example, function, and this is it. So these two, these two are exactly the same thing. For example, again, again in data section here, also we can write that like this. We can say data equals to function, and like this. Continue. So this is also something that you need to have in mind. You can we can write that right like that as well if you want to. But I'm going to call my method name rather than using some method. I'm going to actually use a name for that. And I'm going to write, for example, type char. Right? When user types a character. Okay, the type char is going to be a function. So that's why we are going to go here. And also, so when user uh, types something here, we can say now type char here. We can actually log OK. We can see that if it, ha it ha if it happens, we can see now when we type something, you can see this OK function is now called. So for start, we actually need to say that uh, we can provide the I and J as well if you want to make it easier to write this down. For example, uh, give it I and J so that we know uh, uh, which one is user uh, clicking on, for example, which uh, one of these inputs user were typing on because there are a lot of them and we can uh, detect that with INJ for example INJ for this one is one and one is for this one is one two and things like that so and also um, then now that we have access to this INJ we need to provide that as an argument here so now that we have INJ in uh, jQuery and JavaScript we usually use ID we assign an ID to that input and then we say for example document.get element by ID and focus on that element right but in Vue.js uh, we use ref most often and we, we can give it a ref for example we can use whatever name that we want but I want to use uh, 
variable thing names here. So you remember that if you wanted to, for example, type down a variable, for example, for example, if you want to type down the variable i, you could see that we could do that like this. We can now echo the value of i. But if you are going to uh, write a JavaScript function in an attribute, okay, in an attribute, then we do not do it like this then this is not correct. In attribute, if you put down a double, a, 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 a column, I wanted to say semicolon, but a column be, be before the character, now here we can type actually JavaScript. So this I is now character I. So we can actually, for example, concatenate that. For example, say, uh, hello, for example, concatenate that with variable i. Yeah? So we can actually write down JavaScript now. So it's different whether we want to write JavaScript in an attribute or we want to write, for example, JavaScript or echo something inside our uh, inner HTML contents, right? So this is different. So for the ref, I'm going to give it a ref, for example. We can use concatenation if you want to. For example, say input, for example, input, uh, I and J, and rather than input I and J, for example, concatenate this with I and J, but I don't want to use concatenation. I don't like concatenation. I actually enjoy using this backtick thing that we have. For example, when we use this backtick thing that we have, uh, with this now we can actually uh, uh, write without concatenation use variables inside this without concatenation for example we can say input so this input is considered as text but if i write down i obviously this i is considered as text i not variable i so for that matter we can say dollar sign and this brackets and now we use the variable i rather than text i so this is something that i like more because i you get rid of all those plus signs that you use for concatenations and it's much easier to understand so so the ref i give to this is is input dash ig and think consider that like uh, yeah uh, in javascript and usually previously we used id but here we use ref so now so how can we access this dom element now inside this methods that we have huh well if we console.log this okay so for example this dot dollar refs and also let's console dot log something else for example this dot refs for example uh, refs of one one input one one right input one one and this input one one is actually an array for example if we take a look at this you can see this is an input inside an array because probably it's possible that more than one element has the same ref Right, so that's why it returns an array of all those items. So you can see this is an array inside that. So this is not a DOM element, this is an array. So we can actually console.log the item number zero. So the item number zero is, or the first item inside this array. And you can see now this is a DOM element that we have here. So now that we have a access to a DOM element, we can actually focus on that element calling the focus method on that so here i can copy this here and say focus call the focus method on this so make sure to call this focus method on a dom element not on an array or thing other li things like that this focusing only works on an om but if i say input one one it goes ahead and um, focuses on the input one one we need to make that to dynamically for example whatever the i is whatever the i is and sorry we need to use uh, back tick rather than single quote so th this syntax so so that this syntax works so input i and rather than j we are going to use dollar j plus one but there's a still a problem uh, sorry what is the problem well the problem is when we reach to the end for example now here i write down d as you can see we have an error let's say what is the error let's have that inside a variable and call it for example next input okay equals this one and say next input dot focus i don't know it should work obviously let's call this function save this and you can see the why but what why it's working now why previously it did not work i don't know why yeah let's hit Control z why it was not working previously 
why this <laughs> why this wasn't working let's hit type d and it says zero dot oh we had a typo <laughs> we had a typo here <laughs> I, I have written focus wrong yes yeah, so <laughs> that was the problem so okay let's get back to other problem that we have the other problem is that when we type here everything is okay everything is okay everything is okay Everything is okay, but here, if we type something, we do not have anything, any next element, so that's why we face an error. So, here, actually, we can say uh, if we had, uh, because, no, uh, the er error is something else. It's this problem of reading zero of them, so error is here. So, we can actually put that inside a variable and say const input refs and put that inside the accounts in input refs and say if we had an inputs ref so we, we, we find something with this ref that we have then you are going to focus on the next input that we have so it's going to work now so we are going to use an if statement if we had something then go ahead and focus on that so that's why we can see that <laughs> oh, focus yeah <laughs> next input we, we should say input refs zero i forgot to write that down didn't i i just wrote zero alone with nothing <laughs> So I, I need to concentrate I, uh, not, uh, not to get distracted. So now let's type something and you can see we no longer see an error. But the problem is here still when we write down something the, at the uh, final one user can still type whatever he wants because we are using an if statement. You can use max length for this one. If we type max length, for example, if the max length equals to one, now the max length is one and user cannot type anything more than one. So for, you can see now nothing can user can type nothing more than one character in each type. But we do need that focus section because after user types on an input, we need to focus on the next one for sure. So, uh, and also here, if users type something, we can see that it happens. But there's also something else that we need to check because when user is on his guess one, user is on his guess one, he can no longer write on, uh, for example, uh, two or third or fourth and things like that. For, so we can also have another thing. We can pass that, for example, for now, uh, we can make that, uh, the, for now we can make that, uh, provide that from here and after we may ch think how we can actually, uh, maybe we want to use this variable somewhere else. But for now, I'm going to put this variable here and call it current guess. Okay, and the current guest user first uh, first start is on number one, the current guest that user that has. We might want to come back and change change it from here. We might is probable. So actually here and hit Control Shift D here. So now we can say it current guest and the current guest. The default value for that is is going to be one actually. So. Uh, here, so since we have defined default values here, we can actually go ahead and clean everything here. It, it's going to work just fine, but nah, I'm going to keep that. It's okay. It's, it's not a bad idea to have them there. Yeah. Okay, now that we know the current guess is number one, so we are going to create a disabled attribute here, disabled. We are going to make this input disabled if... Uh, the current guess, okay, current guess, is not as same as this i variable thing that we have, for example, the first row that we have. Because if the current guess is on one, user can only type on row number one. If current guess is on uh, two, uh, the user should type two. So this is it, so let's hit save that, and come back here, hit refresh, and you can see now other things are disabled. And a uh, user can only type down here, not other, not everywhere else. So this is another thing. And we can actually go ahead and make it better and make the first thing out of focus. For example, user don't, don't have to type, click here and type. So this first thing that user wants to type should be out of focus. So there's actually another attribute in um, HTML and that's autofocus. If we apply this autofocus to an input, it's going to be autofocus. But we only need to apply this autofocus to something if 
we are on the first uh, input, so the J has to be 1, and also the I has to be current guess. So we can say if I equals to current guess, so let's copy this current guess, and uh, J, so uh, I forgot to uh, wrote, write this column behind it, so now uh, this uh, is going to look JavaScript code. Without that, it's just a string. So if I equals to the current guess and also J equals to 1, in this case, you are going to have an autofocus attribute for this. So this is it. Hit refresh. We can see now this is autofocus when the page is loaded. User can type something here and... When user now has typed something, it's time for user to hit enter in order to submit the form and send data for somewhere. But uh, now if user hits enter, nothing happens. So we need to ch ch change that. Uh, so let's fix the f uh, uh, this submit thing first. And after that, also there's something else that we need to fix. If I hit backspace and clean this one, and hit backspace again, nothing worse. We, we need to change this one. For example, if user hit backspace and cleaned something, then it's time to focus on the previous element. Yes, how did we focus on the next element? It's time to focus on the previous element. So we just need to detect which character, which key, which key did user press. And if that key that user pressed uh, was backspace, then we need to focus on the previous element. So this is something that we need to have in mind as well. So let's first fix this uh, f uh, submit thing. In order to fix the submit thing, we actually need to use form tag. So rather than using input, let's use form tag for this one. And also now that we have this, so we said in Vue.js, we register our events with at sign. So we can register a, a submit method for this and say at submit equals to call some function, for example, some method, for example, some method. But the problem with at submit here is, uh, well, when the form is submitted by default, HTML or all browsers submit the form via uh, HTTP request. So when you submit a form, the page kind of looks like it was refreshed. But we don't want to do that. We want to use send AJAX request and send request in background and things like that. So uh, and we have a typo. Here. So we can write down at submit, okay, dot prevent. Is this at submit dot prevent what it does? It prevents the default behavior of that form, which uh, prevents the default behavior. What, what is the default behavior? It is going to send an HTTP request, somehow refreshes the page. But uh, let's uh, let's see for yourself. Let's see for yourself. Let's create this some method here. This is some method. And inside that some method, we are going to say alert, for example, hello. We are going to al alert something and also console.log something. Hello from console okay so this this is what some method does and if we do not write this at dot prevent here we say whenever the form gets submitted for example if we hit enter now the form gets submitted you can see why it's not submitted uh, are we uh, using a form tag right yes we are using a form tag but when i hit enter the form is not submitted because i think we need to add a submit button as well let's let's make sure button type submit okay and let's say for example submit for now submit as you can see so hit refresh as you can see now that we type something now without that button to submit that enter pressing enter doesn't work as you can see now that i pressed enter we see that alert but we haven't seen the console message yet but when i said hit okay you can see i never see that console.log i see that briefly but since the page gets refreshed and it sends an http because you can see the page kind of gets refreshed so that's why we use dot prevent in order to prevent that http request and that default behavior that it has and it causes it not to send that request and the page is not now uh, refreshed as you can see we can set enter we see that hello and also we see that hello from console now and uh, we prevented the default behavior that we have so rather than using some method we are going to call it that form 
submit. This is our form submit, but for now, we are going to just alert submitted. And that's it. But uh, we are going to write more lo logics here soon. You will see. We will see how we can actually send Ajax requests and send requests to backend there using Axios. Okay. So let's uh, continue working on the project that we have. But, but now that I see uh, this data section is not uh, needed for now, I, uh, I forgot to clean them. But I'm going to leave this data section in case if we wanted something in our data section in future for for now. But uh, and something else, uh, it's true. I, I first wanted to do something that uh, create a submit bottom here at the end of each thing that when user, for example, uh, after user types all characters to suddenly appear some submit bottom here. But now, I, now that I think about it, we don't need to go too fancy. We have a submit button here uh, at the end. We can actually customize this submit button if you want to. So let's use a HR tag uh, before this submit thing that we have here. So and this bottom type submit that we have, we are going to give it a class of, for example, uh, submit btn okay and we are going to select this submit btn inside our css section so and since this submit btn is something that is inside our inputs uh we are going to, and also i'm going to use for example uh inputs form for this one i think inputs form is better and also after this input row we are going to add something here and that's called submit pitting and we are going to apply some CSS properties to this. So first for start, we are going to give it a, for example, a background color f for test. For now, we are going to continue with brown, but we are going to come back and modify that. And also we are going to give it a color, for example, of white, for example, of white. And we are going to give it a uh, padding, for example, of half a rem as you can see now this is what it looks like for now but this submit btn as you can see since this is a part of our uh, this as you can see now it's it's a part of the we can control uh, you can see uh, since the uh, flex direction is on column and it's a part of our uh, flex content this is what happens we can actually control it with the margin and there's also something called align self Align self, for example, we can put that on center. You can see this is how center looks like. And since the flex direction is on col uh, column, the horizontal control is with align self now. We can set that align self on center if you want to, to uh, right down. So this is, uh, I'm going to set the align self to center so uh, you can have that at center uh, rather than uh, align self, sorry, not items, align self. On center. So now the ally items is on, is on center is uh, how we can have that. And also, I'm going to give it a. So now the padding is on half a rim. But as you can see, uh, the padding, if you come back here, hit inspect on this element and zoom even a little more so that you can see it better. You can see the padding is not working correctly, I think. Let's set the display on, for example, inline block. I think the block button is. Inline block by default. Hmm. No, no, the display of the submit button is on inline block by default because if the display of something be inline, then padding top and bottom are not working on that. So uh, I think it's a good thing to make sure the display is not on inline, but uh, so, so that's why I'm using this display inline block. Uh, but I think the default value for button is actually in line black. But anyway, we can leave that to make sure everything is okay. So rather mm. than using half a rem, now that I think about it, let's use one rem. So this is how, uh, let's hit control zero, hit control zero here. Uh, sorry, for this console, I'm not going to hit control zero. The zoom is going to be this one. So uh, one rem is good. And uh, let's give it a border radius for the border radius is going to for be for example uh, 25 rem 25 so now that you have a border radius and let's give it make it half a rem half a rem is better i think and also for the padding we can say for from top and bottom is going to be one rem but from left and right is going to be two rem so we can increase that as well and also we can give it a 
hover of it and also uh, let's give it a border color for example the, bo ba the background color is brown yes but let's give it a border color let's set the border color to brown but make the background color a little bit lighter something lighter than brown let's see what do we have here for example we can use this one if you want to mm, let's use this one Okay, come back here. I think it's better. So the border color, so rather than using border color and border width and uh, separately, we can say border equals to two pixel solid brown. So this is it. This, this is how two pixels look like, but I'm going to make that in increase that to four pixels. And I think this is how four pixels looks like. Yeah, I think this is how four pixel I think is a lot. So let's make it to this one. I think this is two pixels. I think two pixels is good. Okay. And also we can change the color to brown and see how it looks like rather than white. So let's use brown. The same thing that we use for the border color. Nah, it's not that good. If it want, if you want to make it look good, this submit thing, we need to change this to something even lighter. For example the color that we want to use. So that's why having a UI UX designer is very good, great. Because a UI UX designer chooses all these colors and things for you and you don't need to be worried about that. And let's increase the font weight to bold. We want to have a bold font weight and increase the font size as well. I want to increase the font size to, for example, 1.5 RAM make it one 25 times bigger so this is it i think everything is good to go and now let's just give it a hover effect when user hovers this submit btn okay when user hovers this submit btn and also the cursor is pointer okay the cursor is pointer uh we want to change the background color we want to change the background color to the brown thing that we had let's change the background color to brown and change the color to color to white. This is what I'm going to do. So when I hover this, you can see now it changes. But I want the change to uh, happen smoothly. For example, when I hover, the change happens immediately. But if I give it a transition, transition, uh, sorry, not transform, transition, okay? And the transition for all CSS properties uh, and it's going to be, for example, three, 33 seconds, 0.33 seconds. And this is now a much smoother and better than what we had before. So uh, now that we have that submit BTN and things, the uh, last thing that we uh, need to fix is the backspace thing that we have. When user hits backspace, okay, uh, there's something help, uh, something uh, that I want to ask you. When I, and we have already registered an event for this in input. And the event that we registered was the input event itself. You can see the input event we have registered. Well, my question is, well, when we press A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, it detects the change. But if we press back a space, does it detect the change? For example, if we come back here inside our type car, and every time that user types something, we log console.log, for example, console.log, sorry, console.log, we, we say user did type something. User did type something. So it detects, we want to say if, if it detects the change. So if you come here and click and we see user did type something user did type something and if you in here user did so type something we can see it four times but what if we hit backspace you can see when i hit backspace uh, only it detects the change if uh, if it changes something in it so this input is much different with key press so there's a an an event for at input and there's another event called key press key press detects any key that is pressed on this thing that we have here so we have two options we can say if user cleaned something you need to go and uh, 
focus on the previous element. And if user typed something, you go ahead and still, uh, focus the next thing. Or we can use at key press and say if user pressed backspace, then go ahead and select the previous uh, input. It's up to us. So let's create some variables. For example, the first uh, th thing that I uh, create, I say const current input the current input that user is typing on the current user that user is typing on is actually this one but not j plus one itself and the item number zero and uh, it's always going to be present uh, we need we do not need to check if current input exists it's always going to be uh, present because we are providing inj here and we are using exact the same exact inj here so we are going to always have that current input so now before we go on we need to check the value of this current input that we have so this current input is a dom element okay if you're good at javascript you know how you can access to the value of dom elements if you console.log Okay, let's use console.log here. Let's use this one. If you use console.log and say value is, okay, and here we are going to say current input dot value. Okay, let's see how what is is. If I hit press D, you can see the current value is D. Oh, even though the text transform is to uppercase, but the, we have something. If you press G, you can see the current value is G. But here, what if I clean it? You can see we have no current value. So now we can actually make decision based on this. If we had a value, okay, so we, we are going to use if a statement. If we had a value here, if we need to focus on the next element, something that we have. So come back here and we can create different methods for that. For example, we can create something called focus, focus on next inputs. We are going to create a new function for this one. Focus on next input and uh, we are going to provide it with an i and j and this is how uh, focus on next input happens so this is how next input happens and also uh, we can create another method called focus on preview input focus on rather than next we are going to say prev input and this prev input also provide uh, receives an inj as an argument and here it looks like the same thing but rather than using j plus one we are going to use j negative one and this is the input terms if we had input terms then we are going to focus on that and now we can actually now that i think about it we can actually write it even better for example we can create a new item call it focus focus on an input and this on an input receives an i and j okay receives an i and j i and j and we are going to use the same thing here you will see what i'm going to do now that i think about it i can refactor my code and make a better code write a better code rather than using two methods i can write down one method only it receives only an i and j and if it found anything, it goes ahead and uh, changes that. And in this case, it returns true, returns true. It means that we did actually uh, change, uh, focus on something. Else it's going, it's going to return false, which means that we did not change anything. Okay, so we, we are going to say if we had a current value, you are going to focus on next element, but here, when we are inside our method section, we need to use this before this one. We cannot only call this function just like this without anything. We need to use, use this keyword before that. And also, if we want to access to the data here, if we had a variable called x here, we need to use this.x, not x alone. But here in our template, we do not need to use that this. Okay, have that in mind as well. So we are going to call this focus on an input method. So if we had a value, we are going to uh, focus on the next element. So we are going to focus on the a and j plus one. But otherwise, we are going to focus 
on an input and that input is going to be i and j negative one i think this one is better rather than having two methods and uh, repeating your code in some of your code in, in those two methods so this is focus on input and uh, now that i think for now we do not need that return false or true because hey uh, we, we at here we don't care if it actually worked or not but if in some case we wanted to see if it was okay everything worked fine or correctly we can use that true or false that returns for example here we can say d f s and here we can say backspace 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 here uh, so it, it's working correctly okay so uh, this is enough for this session because the video is getting long so um, let's commit our changes just before we commit our changes i'm going to clean this part because we do not care uh, about the, we are not catching the return value of this method so that's why uh, i'm going to clean it for now but if you wanted it in future we can always uh, bring it back so uh, let's commit our changes in this session and uh, we are going to uh, commit it as let's use git log and see what was the last commit the last commit was part three so i'm going to commit it as part four so if you wanted to access the codes of this uh, session you can just in github you can just go uh, navigate through uh, various commits and go to commit uh, with title of part four so uh, that's why i'm committing my codes after finishing each session so this is it and that's enough for this part in the next part we are going to work on the back end a little more so this is it that's enough hope to see you in the next one